with Norm from Tested. I'm here at Bay Area Maker Fair back for 2023, but first time here is the Bay Area Engine Models Club. Steve, you're a member of the club and you and your other members are showing off miniature working engines here. Correct, there's a difference between making a model and then making a model that actually works. Yes. And so that, you know, in an internal combustion engine, you're gonna have to have you know, intake compression, power exhaust, the four strokes, and then uh, we also make steam engines too. I see that, I see a whole wide range of engines. Some of them look, like if I'm looking at this beautiful model, this looks yeah. like years and years of work, representative of a miniature version of an engine you might find in you know, an automobile. This was uh, uh, built by John Gilmore, who was into drag racing. Oh. So he made, that's why he has two uh, ignitions on here compared to single ignition that you want to make an exact rec replica of uh, a dragster engine. And to make a replica of something, you're looking at just public yeah. available designs and schematics? Yeah, there, there are schematics, or some people make them out of their head. I mean, it's a That's what I'm unbelievable noticing. The, yeah. the, the skill of uh, people. And one of the things about the club, most people in the club are not machinists by trade. And so they're garage machinists, and that means that they're craftsmen, they're artists, and they really uh, make an effort to be a part of the club. And one thing about the club, everybody helps everybody. So sometimes nobody has any secrets, everybody uh, helps out each other about how to do this and how that, because everybody has a learning curve. For someone just getting started, building their first you know, working miniature engine, are there kits that are available? How, if, depending there on how are, much machining experience you have? There are kits, and then, uh, like right there, you can see is a, a kit from uh, PM Research makes a lot of them. And uh, so there's help. Best thing to do is come to a meeting, get some information, go online, and move from there. Yeah. It's, a, it's, not, it's not a cheap uh, uh, activity. You know, because if you buy lathes and mills and stuff. But the stuff is, uh, uh, it, it's affordable. It's just like anything else. If you want a boat or a motorcycle or you want something else, right. it costs money. Yeah. yeah. Here, let's start this up for you. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, a lot of that's what I'm saying. You can have a model, but if you have a working model, yeah, it makes a big difference. Are there any favorite designs in in the group? Or uh, some are. You know, there's a. Uh, this is called a wobbler right here. This is basically a steam engine. Okay, you got a piston. You got a piston here, and um, you'll see that there's a port here. As this rotates, driven by the piston. This would be the crankshaft. See, it, uh, this would be your exhaust port. And then as you turn it around, it'll be the, the uh, intake port. Now, it's called a wobbler because it wobbles back and forth. And that's your most basic motion. Your, yeah, all your, it's all very, the fundamental elements. That's correct, yes. It's got a piston, crankshaft, uh, connecting rod and a flywheel on the back, which is a little bit heavier than the uh, crankshaft, so it keeps turns. And it'll just run like that all day long. And, and those you basic know. principles get scaled up? Yeah, to, uh, and the, 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 these yeah. come in a wide variety of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, design, mm, mm. you know. So that's one of the simplest things to uh, design. And then if you get a, uh, this is, uh, Oh, and so these are examples of kits. This is a casting kit right yeah, here. Yeah, I noticed, yeah, yeah. It takes a while, this this is how it comes in the kit. And then this has been this one's been machined, a number of things, but there's still, and then you can get, uh, here's a cam with a, a degree wheel. So you can grind your own cam, or you need to grind the cam. And then also uh, making the crankshaft, the rods, the pistons. So hey, there's a, a there's a craft to it. There's a system to it. And like, see here is your uh, there's your drawings right there. 
Well, this is internal combustion very early, just pretty much the end of the steam era, 1903. Mm. It was basically, if you look at it carefully, you can see that it was once a steam engine that somebody figured out how to make it run on gasoline. So is that's based on a, like a design, like in a real world, there is a real there, There's a steam engine that looks very much like this. Oh, wow. And they just said, well, we can figure out how to make it, because it's open, open chamber and uh, the, the drip oilers, uh, this vertical shaft drive, a, a plate style cam, yeah. very, very old. And to make this, you know, what was it all scratch built or was it there? It was castings, castings but they're, they're rough. I mean, yeah. yeah, they're lumps. Um, uh, but it's, it's hit and miss, and it's also, uh, I can tell it's getting a little rich, sorry, where it'll stop here. It ran out of gas. <laughs> it does that. Um, this is a wall four, again, internal combustion, very old. They were very popular boat engines for modelers. Originally flathead, then they went over to overhead valve. This and this are both Atkinson cycles. It's it's still a internal combustion engine, but what makes it different is Atkinson was trying to get oh, many of these things was trying to get around the auto patent. Auto owned the four cycle patent. Mm. This, if you look at it carefully, the piston goes in and out twice with one revolution of yeah. the crankshaft. And also the stroke length is different. The downside is you have all this toggle mechanism you have to you have to make up for. But this is demonstration one. And uh, runs like a top. He made that one. He made two and said, I'll give you one. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> this is the same thing. It's an Atkinson also, but it's all hidden, so you really can't see it. So unless you're a motorhead, this is what you want to look at. But the same thing is happening down there. And that strange sound is, it was so quiet, I machined this little bell shape on the end of the exhaust pipe, hoping to make it louder, but it ended up making sound like a flubber mobile. Yeah. But it's, I got a little bit lean. It's like something out of Willy Wonka. Exactly. Oh, it's so lovely. So that was just pure, pure chance and I love it. This is a, I haven't even put gas in this yet. No one, no one seems to be too excited about it, but it's, it's an open miniature Harley Davidson. It's called a hoglet. But it's uh, it's completely open, so you can you can see the crankshaft, you can see the push rod, you can see the cam if you look and you know what you're looking for. This is called a Wyvern. Um, it's a four cycle, uh, hit and miss. It wasn't originally made hit and miss, but I added the hit and miss mechanism to it because I like hit and miss. But this one is very, very old. 1802 is really the beginning of steam. And a lot of this stuff, they really hadn't figured out yet. Like this valve mechanism with this big hoop on the side, comes over to a, a shaft here, operates this. Most steam engines have a thing called a D-valve, but this is not a normal D-valve. The steam does not help it seal at all. It's very long, but it's true to the original, 1802. The other thing is true to the original, and trust me, uh, it's a pain is, if you look at these things, these are called cotters and wedges. That's how they hold bearings in place. There's a thing shaped like a U and then another one like a taper. You drive it in and it holds them together. The other thing you probably don't notice unless you look really close is back then, they didn't have hex head bolts. They're all square. So these are all square bolts, nuts. Even the shaft, most metal they had was forged and it was, they started with the square and they only made enough round that they, that they needed to make round. So you're making the bolts here? From yeah, yeah, 90 of them. Oh, How would I know? <laughs> wow. That's this so cool. is an engine that never existed. This came out of my head. Only because you see there's other types of parallel motion again when they tried to get that piston rod to go up straight up and down. Well, after that was eliminated, they were no longer in process. Uh, 
a French artilleryman and also a Jewish mathematician, some dispute as to who did it, but they invented what is called the Pusselier linear motion. If you look at all these links, this is absolutely truly up and down, straight, straight, straight. But you got all this jazz going. You don't need double, but it just, I thought it would look better to be symmetrical. So this is, this is my own design. It's using the Priscillium linkage in a standard steam cylinder, but I made it parallel beams just because I kind of like it, the looks of that. And this is a uh, hit and miss, fly ball, governor regulated. It's called a um, Silver Angel, designed by uh, Bob Shores. I made it one and a half times the size of his. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but that's pretty much it. That's great. Thank you and so much. And this is Paul. about one third that I have at home. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, it's so great to see you guys here at Maker Fair. Yeah, thank you. And um, people can find people, you're welcoming new members all the time. Yes, if yes. They're interested. But the main things that I really like to tell people is we meet at a beautiful location, the Golden Gate Live Steamers. It's on Tilden Park in Berkeley, third Saturday of every month. It's a beautiful location, and guests and anybody else is always welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you, Paul. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level even, head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve, it's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.